This may cause some controversy with hardcore Texas Chainsaw fans, but I believe if they were to make this single change, it would open this game wide up. Today we're talking Texas Chainsaw, and I've talked about this game extensively over the past month. And let me go ahead and say, I think this is the best, not only $40 game I've bought in a long time, but one of the best games I've played in a long time, and they continue to roll out constant updates. And so if you take this video as me complaining, you got me all wrong because I really love this game. I love the detail. I've talked about all this stuff in various videos. But today I just want to mention some things that I think would make it even more dynamic. And there's one in particular, could cause some controversy, but I think that it would not only help to speed the game up, but it would also help to change some of the outcomes of the game entirely. Let's go and get into it. Now, if you like the Texas Chainsaw content that I'm doing here and want to see more of it, plus additional games that I'm going to be doing right here on the channel, make sure you subscribe and hit your notifications so you never miss one from me. Thank you all for being a part of this community. Let's talk about the first one, which I think would really uh, just kind of bring a new feel to the game almost, which is weather, dynamic weather. And so thunderstorms <laughs> have always been a part of horror films. And while it's not in the first film of Texas Chainsaw Massacre, it has obviously been in future installments. And like I said, it's just kind of a staple of horror genres in general, you know? So not only having thunderstorms, but also instead of just a day map or dusk or, you know, um, nighttime maps actually have those things change throughout the map. So let's say it starts in late dusk and then it switches over to night halfway through the game or five minutes in or 10 minutes or whatever, you know, if the game goes that long. Um, and it actually, you know, may change how you approach that particular game. It sounds like a small change. I'm sure there's a lot that goes into it behind the scenes of what these guys would have to do. I just think it would help to uh, kind of change the feel of each and every map, especially if it changes throughout the map. I think that'd be really cool. Now, I've talked about this extensively too. I believe it's not only something they should do, but they have to do. It's a necessity for them to obtain additional licenses to other films, right? But a map they could use from the original film or something that could be turned into a map is the cemetery from the original film. They could surely add, you know, crematoriums and, you know, different buildings and stuff to kind of break up, you know, not just a wide open cemetery, of course, but there's a way they could incorporate that, which I think would be cool. Another thing that they could do to, you know, help new players help us out whenever we do see additional maps in the future is an actual map. Like in Friday the 13th, you find a map. Now you can pull this, you know, map up. And if you're a new player, okay, you know, this is the layout of the basement. This is the layout of upstairs, slaughterhouse, wherever you're at. Um, so just another little small change there that I think would help the entire community. And it'd be kind of cool to see it on a map. So, okay, I know, you know, where this exit is. And it's not going to necessarily tell you where, hey, there's a fuse box here or there's a valve here, but just give you a layout of the map that you're in. Now, I did want to add something to that, though. It would be nice if on that map they showed you, similar to Friday the 13th, that, you know, some of the other victims already have a fuse in their possession or a valve in their possession. So if it's, you know, one out of two, they'll show a check mark or two out of two. And then that way, you know, one of your fellow victims already has uh, you know, pieces for various exits and you don't really need to search for those things. Or maybe that victim has died and you do need to search for their body so you can retrieve those items if you want to use that escape. Now, here's one I'm unsure of if they fixed in the last update. I forgot to check that. And even though I covered that one pretty extensively, I didn't see this as an update. So I don't think it's changed. If you know, leave me a comment down below. But Essentially, when you're the victim, if you disconnect in the middle of a kill, it doesn't count for the killer himself. So that should definitely be addressed there because XP is another thing that I want to talk about here on the killer side. They got to find a way to increase the XP for killers. Now, I've had some really good matches as killers, but typically, you know, one or two kills, it's not going to get you nearly as much XP as it will for victims. So I, I wish they would find a way to, you know, give you additional XP as the killer. 
Here's another one. The grandpa cutscene, they should cut it. Cut it out of the game. It's so obnoxious, man. And I, you know, for a while there, I was okay with it. But it's like if you're playing as Leatherface, you can overheat your chainsaw, depending on what you're doing. If you're in the middle of a chase, you break your line of sight with the victim, or, you know, that victim then gets killed, or it's just obnoxious. It doesn't need to be there. We could have a, a little text up at the top of the screen that says, hey, Grandpa's awake by whatever means, whether it was through the family or the victims. Play the sound effect, and that's all we really need to know. Grandpa has woken up from his nap. That's that's it, man. So, I, you know, the whole cutscene there is kind of obnoxious. I wish they would take it out. Yeah, here's the big one. Don't make it where Leatherface is a requirement to start the match, right? If you want to play as Johnny, Sissy, Cook, go for it, right? This will help speed up the cues. No longer will there be this little game between the killers where, you know, they're all three one of those characters I just mentioned, nobody's picking Leatherface and they're just kind of waiting. Is this guy going to pick him? Is this guy, do I have to pick him? You know, maybe somebody is Leatherface. They ask to switch with you. You decline it. Then they back out. And now the timer is still, it's just, dude, it slows down the cues so much. And, and not only that, I really wish they would make it where if five out of seven people have readied up, everybody is automatically readied and they throw throw people into a match. I just, where everybody has to ready up, man, it just, it's kind of a nightmare. They need to speed that up. Also the, you know, the victims getting into a match seems slower now than the family, but this is only after that last update that I really noticed that. Uh, but if they remove Leatherface, not entirely, you know, obviously some people like playing as Leatherface, but, you know, he lacks some skills that some of the others have. You know, Hitchhiker and Sissy, their abilities to, you know, go through gaps and crawl spaces and all that makes them very useful. You know, Hitchhiker's traps, Sissy's poison, you know, Johnny's tracking ability, all of that really makes them a more viable option. So think about how many, you know, scenarios would then play out if Leatherface isn't right on top of you. You know, everybody kind of starts upstairs. Maybe, maybe they have it where one killer still starts in the basement with y'all. I don't know, but I just think it would be better if you let people choose the killer. Here's the caveat. Let's say five minutes in. Have a cutscene where Leatherface actually opens the door like he does in the movies and give one of the three killers the ability to then choose Leatherface. Where, let's say you're playing as Johnny, and then, you know, it's like, you know, I can't find them, or maybe it's Cook, you know, and he's like, oh, I can't find these dang kids, I'm tired, you know, or something like that. And then they can swap to Leatherface, you know, five minutes in, and then he opens up the door like he does in the movie, and then he's able to come in if you want to do that. If you don't want to do that, you just hit decline, you know, just a single button. Nope. I don't want to play his leather face. Maybe somebody else will pick him up. Maybe nobody will pick him up. Maybe nobody wants to play with him, but that'll keep your main star involved in the game. Potentially if people want to play as him, but it'll help speed the queue time up where people can get in the match. They can play as their favorite killer. If they want to switch to leather face five minutes in or whatever, they have the ability to do that. And it only play the cutscene for the character that actually chooses to the, then play as Leatherface. I think that'd be a pretty cool compromise. They don't have to do that. I just thought it was something a little extra that they could throw into the game to make it an option if you want to keep Leatherface involved in the game. That's where I'm at with it, man. Again, I know some hardcore fans will not like that, but either way, however you feel, I'd love to hear from you down in the comments section. What do you think some more things they should do to make Texas Chainsaw Massacre as good as it can be? right? Because there's always room for improvement. They've already given us a really good solid base. These are just some more changes I'd like to see, especially the one with Leatherface. Big thanks to you guys. See you in the next one. And as always, hold them down.